more than 7,000 islands in the Philippines. And it's always been hard for the politicians in Manila to project their power across all of them. Just to the south of here is Mindanao, the largest of the islands in the Philippines. And it's one the government has found particularly difficult to control. Katia Adler has been to Mindanao, an island that's more conflict zone than holiday destination. Mindanao is different from the rest of the Philippines. Many people here are Muslim. Over the years, ethnic and religious tensions, as well as historical land disputes, have frequently erupted into armed conflict. Currently, the south of the island looks like a war zone. Westerners have been kidnapped here. Muslim insurgents are fighting for an independent homeland. The Filipino army has a big presence in Mindanao. It's trying to keep control of the island. The sense of grievance here runs deep. To find out more, I went to a Muslim school to meet the head teacher. Assalamu alaikum. Mrs. Abu Bakar teaches her students the history of their homeland, which they call Bangsamoro. The lesson I prepare for you is the Bangsamoro nation centuries older than the Philippines. Do you understand? Okay. The Muslims of Mindanao say they weren't conquered by the Spanish in the 16th century, so many believe they shouldn't be part of the Philippines. People like Mrs. Abu Bakar want to belong to an independent Islamic sultanate. And therefore, we have the right to claim independence because we are still Muslim up to now. If we are not For many Muslims, autonomy is simply not enough. How do you solve the problem? Yes. Start the war. Okay. What else? Yes? Return the Mangsamoro independence. Return the independence. So what I'm saying is, this land belongs to the Bangsamoro people. When you talk to them about the conflict, do you mention the rebel groups who do use violence? They know. Even we don't teach them, they know. They are informed. They know what is going on. Even they are young, they know. They know. They know the story because uh, their neighbors, their relatives, their fathers are Mujahideen. Mujahideen are fighters. But, but I do not recommend fighting. I don't recommend war. Many of these students also have friends and relatives made homeless by the fighting. They prepare relief packages of food and clothes for the refugees. To deliver these packages to the makeshift camps means driving through the war zone. here has been tightly controlled as the food bags have been handed out. We've been locked into a gate with a, a few hundred people because from the small school that we've come from we've only had a few hundred bags. But on the other side of that gate are thousands more people, thousands more Muslims who have lost their homes, they're hungry and they're desperate. Because of the cost of war, the suffering that we see all around us, would you be willing to say, okay, we won't have independence in order to have peace? Would you give that up? I don't think so. It's, personally, I don't think I can do that because I don't trust this, uh, the, the, the maker of this situation. I don't trust it. Um, you mean the Philippine government? Yeah, right. The Muslims will sustain here. This land belongs to us. And we live here. We live in Mindanao. This is our home.
As in so many conflicts around the world, this island has been ripped apart by land disputes and religious tensions. Over the years, attitudes have hardened. People have reached for guns. Here, even those who say they value peace, like Mrs. Abu Bakr, prize victory over compromise. If there is to be peace in Mindanao, there'll have to be an outbreak of trust on all sides. <laughs> 